members of the Governing Board, this is N.J. Utter sharing with you some information on our concussion protocols in Sunnyside Unified School District. My thanks to Sunnyside Athletic Director Dan Bartley and Athletic Trainer Greg Lotta for compiling this information. A concussion occurs when an individual sustains a blow to the head. This is a serious brain injury that can occur in both non-contact and contact sports. For a detailed information, there's a very good video on YouTube at the link listed below. When a head injury occurs, there are typically signs and symptoms. Physical symptoms, such as a student experiencing headaches or dizziness. There might be physical signs, such as a loss of balance and coordination or cogniz cognitive symptoms, such as memory and concentration losses or there are even times when a concussion causes an emotional change, feelings of depression and irritability. These signs or symptoms may occur immediately after the injury or their onset may be delayed. One misconception is that concussions only occur when there has been a loss of consciousness. In fact, the majority of concussions do not result in a loss of consciousness. While concussions are dangerous, there is an even greater danger from second impact syndrome, which is when a second concussion happens when the brain is still healing from a previous concussion. While rare, this may be preventable by removing the athlete who has experienced a concussion from practice or play until their symptoms have totally gone away and the athlete is cleared by a health care professional. For this reason, prevention is extremely important and we take great steps in protecting our student athletes from harm from concussion or from second impact syndrome. Our proactive measures are also in place because of the Arizona Interscholastic Association, which requires that all student athletes and coaches complete training on concussions through the National High School Federation before they are cleared to coach or to play. One step in this is that students are given a baseline test for concussion done prior to any students beginning the start of a sports season, school year, or other activity. The baseline scores are collected and stored on our um, healthcare server. The impact baseline test recommends readministering the baseline test every two years so that it is current. If an injury occurs or a student is displaying any symptoms of a concussion, then a post-injury test is administered. Test results are compared to the baseline scores and or a normative data score as part of a healthcare provider's assessment of the injury. Multiple post-injury tests may be given to an individual during the course of treatment and rehabilitation. Sunnyside purchases a site license each year to make sure we can conduct this testing. When a student athlete is allowed to return to play is actually listed in legislation. The law requires that a pupil may return to play on the same day if a healthcare provider rules out a suspected concussion at the time the pupil is removed from play. A healthcare provider includes a physician who is licensed, but it also includes an athletic trainer, which is the person who is typically monitoring any sort of concussion from our student athletes. Again, we have very strict return to play guidelines at Sunnyside. When a student has been deemed to have experienced a concussion because of our concern about second impact syndrome, they must actually meet three qualifications to be returned to play. The first is that their scores on impact must return to the baseline measure that they took before they began participating in a season. Secondly, they must show a SCAT-3 symptom score of a zero. And finally, they must complete an exertion testing program with no symptoms of concussion returning. The SCAT-3 is a standardized tool for evaluating injured athletes for concussion. 
It can be used in athletes aged from 13 years and older. Again, if a student has experienced or displayed any of the symptoms such as headaches, balance, coordination, etc., then they begin moving into the SCAT-3 assessment. When their impact scores have returned to baseline and they have a SCAT-3 symptom score of zero, the athletic trainers will begin to ramp up their activity through what they call exertion testing. That might look like beginning with some light exercise, such as 20 minutes on an, a stationary bike. If the athlete again shows symptoms of concussion, then they are immediately stopped in their progression. If they are able to endure the light exercise with no symptoms, then again, the exertion may be ramped up where they begin to do some circuit training. Perhaps they'd be allowed to do team warm-ups or post-practice conditioning, but not have activity in actual drills. They might then be allowed to have limited team drills, but no contact until finally, when at no point are they exhibiting any symptoms, they've passed the SCAT, and they have an impact score that has returned to their baseline data and have met all of this gradual return through exertion testing, they would be cleared for full return to play. While most of this information has been related to high school athletics, where the greatest risk for concussion seems to lie, we do have district protocols in place as well for concussions that are not related to high school athletics. In a middle school athletic event, or on the playground, if a student experiences a head injury, 911 would be called as needed. A school nurse would be called to evaluate the student if a school nurse was available. An incident report form would be submitted to the Student Relations Office. Parents are always encouraged to take students to their medical provider, and the recommendation of the medical professional regarding reentry is followed, which might mean following a nurse's recommendation that a student not be allowed to participate in an activity for a specified period of time. I hope that answers some of the questions that you had about concussions, and I am confident that our athletic trainers, athletic directors, can answer any questions that you might still have. Thank you.